talk about terms like quantum healing, you're right, it is confusing for people and there's been a lot of people that have kind of hijacked the term mm -hmm. to make things sound a little confusing or woo-woo in order to cover up pseudoscience or to cover up uh, essentially stuff that doesn't have a lot of objective uh, results behind it. Mm. And the challenge is you have kind of a polarity in the medical world. You have the traditional medical based Newtonian grounded cause and effect which has been the predominant source of truth for the last hundred and you know, plus years. And we're starting now to understand a lot more scientifically that completely invalidates that model. And we know, for example, even in law, that something called the placebo effect, mm -hmm. we put into law that if your mind, mm -hmm. your beliefs, which is intangible, non-physical, your belief about what it is that you're doing in terms of pills that you're taking, procedures you're following, has is as big, if not bigger, impact on the body's own healing than the actual molecular chemical structure of what it is that you're taking. Now that's, that's just fact. And it's so much of a fact that they won't allow you to sell a pharmaceutical drug unless you can beat your own belief system about it. And many, if you do your research, either don't make the grade or if you take the largest selling antidepressant, for example, mm -hmm. it only outperformed its sugar pill placebo on a double blind controlled study mm -hmm. by about 2%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there have been so many studies, but the problem is medical science will not give credibility to the studies, so they won't publish them in peer reviewed journals, so they won't be accepted mainstream because the very acceptance of this pulls away the foundation that they stand so holier than thou on to validate their own significance based on their model of the world. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you and I just want to heal, I don't need to have the rubber stamp seal of approval from science that deals only in the objective world to something that is essentially a subjective experience. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'd probably be dead by the time that happens. Mm -hmm. So learning how to heal at a quantum level and quantum healing is really just understanding that all healing happens at a level of intelligence that supersedes the physical. You cannot heal your body. A doctor cannot heal your body. A pill cannot heal your body. All it can do is facilitate the body's ability to heal itself. Now, when you understand that, you can start taking more charge of your own healing and start looking at what is that process? Okay. What is the innate intelligence behind it? Mm -hmm. And as you quite rightly state, when you get into meditation, there are miracles of spontaneous remission that, again, the typical Newtonian-based paradigm of traditional allopathic medicine completely ignores as an anomaly that really validate that once you get into a theta state, once your brain waves go from anywhere from about four to seven hertz, you are in a highly susceptible, essentially a state of hypnosis, yeah. where the front critical aspect of the brain that deals with the science and the objective mm -hmm. is put to sleep, and you are now open to magical stuff happening. And mm -hmm. again, we don't like using the term magical, but a hundred years ago, if you'd have seen a Harrier jump jet park on your driveway, it would have been magical because you don't okay. understand the science. Accelerate their healing. Uh -huh then the first thing that they have to look at or they have to understand is that, again, it's 70% non-physical, mm -hmm. including your beliefs around why you're ill, the thought patterns and the thinking processes over time that have caused the disease. And there isn't a credible doctor on the planet right now that won't link some level of emotional component psychosomatically to the illness. And you then have to support it physically. Now, just talking about the physical side, because that's what people can understand the most, it makes sense. If the body is programmed to heal itself, you're not programmed to get sick. That's not part of the rule set. If you get sick, it's because you're off kilter. Uh -huh. And you know when they're doing studies on animals, which I'm not a fan of, they will induce sickness in them by moving, either introducing a certain toxin or creating a certain lifestyle, etc. Mm -hmm. that is not conducive to health of that animal. Mm -hmm. So we know how the physical symptoms work. And if you uh, have a rule set that governs the physical processes, you c if you violate that rule set, something's gonna happen. If I hit somebody in the head with a lead pipe, they're gonna have brain damage and not be able to move. That's part of the rule set. If somebody eats a overwhelming amount of junk food, they're gonna have a physical response to that. 
So there is a physical component, but the body's not designed to get sick if you give it what it needs. So sickness, the first thing to understand is that the cancer cloud doesn't come along and rain on you. It's not a roll of the dice. There is a cause to the sickness, but predominantly most of the cause is based in the non-physical. And you see this all the time. As soon as people give up their resentments, give up blaming their parents, give up their victim story, all of the stuff that generally is a low frequency that doesn't feel good, then the body starts to get well. The mm -hmm. body starts to respond. But physically, you have to support it. So no toxins mm -hmm. and stop putting the wrong things in. Mm -hmm. Start putting the right things in mm -hmm. and get the things that shouldn't be in there out. That's mm -hmm. health in three simple steps. Everything mm -hmm. else falls under one of those categories. Mm -hmm. So on a physical, two sides of that. One is try to reduce it you know, uh, voluntarily and don't eat chemical crap that you shouldn't eat, preservative. Mm -hmm. And also uh, try to increase your body's own immunity, mm -hmm. which will make a massive difference. Well, let's come back to the non-physical. What I will say on that is that your beliefs around it count for a huge amount. You go to one of the spiritual masters you can see on the wall behind me. Uh, you can walk amongst them and not be affected by them. I was able to walk into a leper colony and heal people without being affected and catching leprosy. Why? His belief around his level of health had so much congruency and certainty. His heart and mind was so aligned. See, if I want to eat a burger, quite rare, but if I do, because I'm not super anal about health and when it comes to like, you know, being meticulous because that is the other side of the pendulum swing. Mm -hmm. But if you want to take charge of that direction with your health, it starts with your thoughts. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you can walk amongst them and not be affected by them. That, that only has a, a limited effect in the physical world. Mm -hmm. You can think salads all you like, but if you're eating three cheeseburgers a day, your physical rule set will override that level of belief. But if you're having a burger once in a while, if you feel guilty about that, that's going to double the effect, the negative effects, because now you're putting your body into a state of you know, catabolic stress because of the guilt. You're lowering your immune system. You're dropping your you know, I, IGF factor. You're compromising your integrity of your the cells based on your thoughts way more than the cheeseburger. Mm -hmm. So beliefs around what you do count for a large amount. Uh -huh. So again. Physically, stop putting the wrong things in, start putting the right things in, and put, try to get the things that shouldn't be in there over time out. That's called detoxing. And then sleep is a big component of the physical world because the body rejuvenates and repairs when your conscious mind is out of the way. Mm -hmm. So deep sleep, if you're healing, try to get at least two hours of deep sleep a, a night. When I say deep sleep, I'm talking slow wave. So from half a hertz, half cycles per second in terms of brain waves, right up to around about five hertz. Where I wear this, it's an aura ring, and that tracks all of my everything from heart rate variability, body uh -huh. temperature, slow wave, fast wave. It's, it's a great app. But I would say the average person would get a, a good night's sleep for repair, an hour to an hour and a half of deep sleep in a seven hour window. Mm -hmm. Maybe two hours of REM sleep which is great. Deep sleep is where the physical rejuvenation occurs. REM sleep, which is the rapid eye movement where we dream, where we're more in theta than delta, is where the neural synapses actually start integrating a lot of the learning that we've had in the previous day. And other synapses that are not being used for a while kind of get pruned like leaves on a tree. It's fascinating to watch under a microscope. So yeah, the body is very busy when you're asleep, which is why it tries to get you out of the way in terms of your conscious awareness. I think one, two, three, three times that I've healed bones on x-ray in under three weeks. And the last time was only about six months ago when I was riding my bike. I came off the bike and I bounced off the pavement and I got up and this shoulder was kind of level with my chin and this wrist was you know, all twisted. And it showed that I'd smashed my AC joint here and I'd actually split my radius from here all the way down. Mm -hmm. Almost like, a, like someone had put a, a, a splitter bar in it and come at this way rather than a typical break this way. Mm -hmm. And that wouldn't have been so much of an issue, but I was meant to be going to Africa three weeks later, trekking gorillas in the jungle. And I couldn't afford to not go because I was leading a team of 10 of my senior coaching clients and they'd all paid a lot of money and it couldn't cancel. And there was a lot of, you know, a lot at stake. But I went straight onto my YouTube channel and I'm in a sling here because my shoulders bust. I'm in a cast here, so I can't do anything. I'm literally immobilized. And I said, hey, what a great opportunity to demonstrate one of my accelerated healing aspects. And again, I went through the mindset that one needs. 
the mindset of yeah, allowing the body to heal, yeah, visualizing yeah, on a meditation, pink light, white light, seeing the bones fuse together like magnets, entering high frequency states like unconditional love, gratitude, joy, compassion, humility, forgiveness, forgiving yourself for falling off the bike. And those states accelerate healing. It's just non-negotiable as opposed to doing what a lot of people do, unfortunately, which is fight or resist their condition, which creates a state of acidosis, which creates a state of resistance, which creates a state of high cortisol. Yeah, there's a massive biochemical component there. In fact, if I'm working with people with cancer, one of the first questions I asked is, when was the last time you sat on the same side of the table and asked the disease what it wanted? Because if it's a message and you're trying to get rid of it, that's like looking at the red light on the dashboard that's flashing that you're low on oil and saying, right, I'm gonna get rid of this light. So you get a pair of wire snippers and you cut the wire from behind so it doesn't bother you anymore. Yeah. And that's what a lot of people do with drugs. Yeah. So when was the last time you sat down and said, okay, I'm clearly off kilter somewhere. I know the cloud of cancer doesn't just rain on me randomly. What's caused this? Now it may be a physical component your 20 years of lifestyle of diet and smoking and what have you, or asbestos exposure or whatever it may be, there's some physical, but more often than not, vast majority of time, it is a non-physical component. 